In this video, we will be questioning our life choices as we leave our heated hotel room before sunrise and head out into some of the coldest temperatures that either of us have ever experienced. The good thing is that the suffering will be worth it because we are heading out to hike the Queen's Garden and Navajo Loop. Since it's a loop, you can start this trail at either sunset or sunrise point, but we always like to start it at sunset point. Welcome to beautiful Bryce Canyon National Park. It's very cool, 15 degrees. Yeah. Red. So cold, the GoPro is giving us all sorts of trouble today. But Bryce Canyon National Park is famous for its hoodoos. If you're not familiar with a hoodoo, that's a hoodoo. And that's also a hoodoo. And that is a hoodoo. And you guessed it. All of these are hoodoos too. Right out of the gate, you get to see one of the celebrities of the park, which is Thor's hammer. This is a unique formation because it's a large gray boulder perched on top of a skinny hoodoo. Keep an eye on it as you hike further down the trail because it gets even more impressive as you get a little bit lower. A short ways into the hike, you will come to a fork and you can take the trail for either two bridges or Wall Street. So in the winter, Wall Street is closed because it's really slippery going down. So you have to go through two, uh, two bridges, but in the summer, then that way is open. Yeah, and it's really pretty. So if you have that option, I would definitely take it. If you enjoy taking photos like we do, you're going to want to leave some extra time for this hike and probably every other hike here in Bryce Canyon. The landscapes here are unlike anything that we've ever seen and it seems like you can't go 50 feet without having to stop and take another shot. As you can see, we have not made it very far. The top of that hill is where we started from, but one of the beautiful things about this trail is that you pretty much are in just surreal landscapes from the get-go. You can't really beat this. Now that we're getting a little bit lower, we're starting to get to the most picturesque angles of Thor's hammer. If you're gonna be doing this hike in the winter, it is extremely important that you bring yourself some spike. Nice. <laughs> uh, well, spikes are good if the trails are hard packed. Uh, we also recommend bringing in no shoes. Uh, we rob both of us because on our trip report, people say that the snow would be ankle deep. So bring both uh, or at least crampons. Yeah. Yeah, supposedly, as of yesterday on all trails, ankle deep down towards the bottom. So that could be interesting. If you don't have your own, they sell spikes at the visitor center and they also rent spikes and snowshoes at the winter adventure center. It's much a micro snowflake for the air right now. I'll try and kill it. <laughs> Even though we aren't going to be able to do the Wall Street Trail on this day, there is another beautiful set of switchbacks on this trail as well. These nine switchbacks tucked between the two towering walls make for yet another beautiful photo op. The other thing that this canyon is good for is dropping the temperature even more. A freezing wind was rushing through the canyon and making things slightly less than pleasant. So it was time to pull up our neck gaiters, which I thought kind of made me look like a ninja, and continue on. The cold weather couldn't break our spirits though because we love Bryce Canyon. We even had to break out into her happy dance. As we came to the end of the canyon, we were thrilled to see that we would be back in the sunlight because it was a whole lot warmer. And this is also where you'll find a fork to a very short trail that will take you to two bridges. So this is why it's called two bridges. We have bridge one and bridge two right there. You see it? After leaving two bridges, you are just a short hike from the next junction in the trail, which comes at right around six tenths of a mile into the hike. Along the way, V decided to help one of the trees get some of the heavy snow off of its branches and she pretty much ended up getting the snow all over herself instead. So we came from 
this way is the two bridges. If you go in straight this way, we'll uh, continue on to Queen's Garden and then go back to Sunrise Point. This, uh, if you end up doing Wall Street, that will be the loop for Wall Street. It's closed right now in the summer. It's open, I mean, sorry, winter. It's gonna be reopened in the summer. Uh, if you're doing pickable drills with loop back to price point, that small drills right there will take you back to price point. So since we're doing the Navajo loop to Queens Garden, we are going to make a sharp left at the bottom of the trail and uh, keep on trucking. We haven't encountered any super deep snow yet. Uh, they said ankle deep yesterday. Obviously, as you can see down here, it is deep-ish, but I guess maybe enough people have come through to pack it down a little bit, but uh, no need to change into the snowshoes as of yet. Yeah, look at that. That is pretty deep right there. So this part of the hike is a little bit interesting because most of the hoodoos are kind of covered up by trees. Almost doesn't look like Bryce Canyon anymore, but uh, as soon as we round this next corner, it's gonna be 10 times the amount of hoodoos. It's gonna go hoodoo to the max. The trail is really flat and easy here. And at right around nine tenths of a mile, you should be making a left and heading back towards the hoodoos. Along the way, I wanted to knock some snow off the trees like V did, and I almost got annihilated by this giant snowball. One, two, three. <laughs> you can definitely tell that we're from Southern California, and we don't get to see the snow very often. We are now closing in on our favorite part of this hike. I mean, it's pretty hard to narrow it down. It's more like the second half. Don't get me wrong, the first half of this hike is gorgeous, but the second half takes it to a whole nother level. If you need a break along the way, this is probably one of the coolest spots to stop and have a snack. Not only will this little cave give you some shade, but they also added a log for a place to sit. Not too long after the rest stop is another awesome feature on this trail, and it's this short, miniature slot canyon. Part of the reason that we love this trail so much is that it has so many unique things to offer. So we came to another fork. Uh, we came from that way, that's going back to Sunset Point. If you want to keep going, um, so we have Queen Victoria, that's a really cool formation, so it's just a shortcut. And then to go back the other way uh, to Sunrise Point, we're gonna go through that super cool little hallway, uh, door, window, whatever that is right there. So that's right. So, and so that's we go back to Sunrise Point, and then from there we'll connect back to Sunset Point. Uh, now we're gonna go check out Queen Victoria. So we're gonna go left this way. This is another very short side trail. It won't take too long to check out and it's really pretty, so it's worth stopping by. I present to you Her Highness Queen Victoria. In addition to the queen, there are other cool hoodoos to check out here and views across the canyon. You can even get a view all the way across the valley to where you started the hike. Actually, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. There might be an imposter because there's this one that I think is the queen, but there's also this one here kind of looks similar. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. There's a bit of a funny story because neither of those hoodoos ended up being Queen Victoria. The real queen is actually directly behind the hoodoo that we thought was Queen Victoria. Or if you're looking at the informational sign, it will be off to your right. Even though we didn't really get any video of her, here's a photo so you can identify her if you visit.
So we have now left Her Highness, and uh, we're gonna head back through that nifty little uh, rocky door, arch, window. Is there any other words for an opening in the rock like that? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but we're gonna head through that. Each archway that you walk through teleports you into yet another beautiful landscape. It had been about five years since we were last here and we forgot that there are actually three arches that you get to walk through on this trail. And once you cross through the first one, you'll come to one of the best viewpoints of Queen's Garden. The only thing you need to keep in mind if you're hiking it in the snow is that some parts of the trail are pretty narrow. Yeah, and uh, it looks like it's a lot wider than it is. And both of us have uh, found out that we weren't exactly on the trail. We were a little bit off the side. And you kind of, ah, you definitely don't want to go uh, all the way down there. I mean, it might be pretty down there, but I don't want to go there that way. So watch your step. It's only a short distance from the first archway to the second one. It has a little bit of a slot canyon that leads up to it, so it gets some bonus style points. We are always so amazed by the hoodoos. Even though there are other places in the world where you can find them, you'll never find another place where they're as abundant as in Bryce Canyon National Park. Okay, so uh, this is our first video where we're attempting to do a little bit more speaking on camera. And we just we just came up those nasty switchbacks and- That's just the beginning. Yeah, there's a lot more climbing left to do. And we're, I don't know what elevation we're at. It's, it's definitely higher, so. We're breathing a little hype. You might hear a bit more wheezing as we go. <laughs> but we're giving it our shot. Yeah, what do you think? Let us know. Let us know what you think. And uh, I think this is what we're going to be trying to do from here on out. So hopefully you like it. So this is our third or fourth time doing this hike. And every single time my mind is blown away. I mean, look at this view. It's so beautiful. We've done it both summer and winter. Summer is really, really pretty. But I mean, you have to be here in the snow. It's just so... I, I can't even, I don't have words for this. It's like a little winter wonderland here. It's, it's amazing. The third archway that you come to is quite a bit smaller than the first two. If you're 5'9 or taller, you are going to have to duck to get through it. You're going to be putting some work in at this point and the rest of the trail is going to be spent climbing back up to the rim. All right, so we're towards the end. There are a series of decently steep switchbacks and uh, the heavy breathing has commenced. <laughs> How you doing back there? <laughs> but look at, in the meantime, the scenery is pretty good. I almost fell off a little cliff right there. And I don't know if this is officially sanctioned by the park, but we're calling this rock Baby Thor's Hammer. So that's what it is. It's super cute. As you round this corner, you're going to get a view of a whole new side of the park. It may not be as concentrated as far as hoodoos go, but it is stunning covered in the snow. As soon as we got back up to the top of those switchbacks, wait, it got a lot more exposed and a heck of a lot colder. It's supposed to have a uh, low of negative one tonight, so. Looking forward to that. Hopefully we will be uh, well past the point where we are back in the hotel room, taking a hot shower. <laughs> Cause I'm not, uh, born and raised in Southern California and uh, we don't play that negative uh, temperature stuff. 
I wouldn't say that the climb out is brutal, but when you add some snow on it, it definitely becomes a little bit more challenging. We are almost back up to the rim, but there are a couple more switchbacks that want to uh, punish you a little bit along the way. <laughs> How you doing back there? It's not the steepest thing that we've ever climbed by any means, but uh, we've done worse. Yeah, the good, the good thing is though, you get to climb with this as a uh, background, which is awesome. Definitely does not suck. It sure appears like the Navajo Loop, which was the first part of the trail that is way over there. Seemed like the snow was way more hard packed. Like maybe that trail is a little bit more popular. This isn't like complete powder, but it's definitely a little bit more squishy. So prepare for that if you uh, are gonna be doing this one. You'll be gaining about 320 feet of elevation on this final climb, so that's pretty respectable. Add to that the fact that the entire trail so far has been either downhill, flat, or barely uphill, and this feels quite a bit more significant. So it's a little hard to see, but we started way over there. There's some switchbacks. And you can see right about over here, you can just see the tiniest little tip of Thor's hammer. And uh, basically we walked throughout this awesome little winter wonderland right here. The top of the rim was in sight. And even though this wasn't the finish line for the hike, this was the end of the most difficult part. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a steep uphill. Yeah, we came all the way from down there. This way up, but we're almost here. You can see it right here. Yay! As we gasped for air, we made one final push up to the top of the rim. So we have successfully made it to the top. And once you get there, there's this little extra bonus viewpoint if your legs aren't too blasted and it takes you to this one tree I believe it's called the walking tree correct uh I'm not a hundred percent sure but I believe that's what it's called we'll double check we'll back <laughs> if it's not called the walking tree that's the nickname that we've given it <laughs> pretty cool so we'll show you yeah and it's a it's a really famously uh photographed tree and it doesn't look like it should exist but uh, I'm glad it does yeah, and I mean, you can't, I know we've done like 40,000 sweeps, but that view it just is second to none. So if you're not doing the hike, if you're just here, um, you know, just to take a look at the point, um, you can actually go up to the viewpoint on top here where we're going up. And then from there, you can see the amphitheater down below. So for those that doesn't want to do the hike, you can see some of it. Yeah, definitely, top. definitely. So. That's but, a good option. Yeah, let's go up though. Yeah. And here we have the walking tree. And as we mentioned before, not only do you get great views of it, but you get some postcard worthy views of the amphitheater as well. After soaking in the views for a bit, it was time to get back on the rim trail and head towards the warmth of the Jeep. All right, so we just left the viewpoint, which is right over here. And now uh, it's a fairly simple, almost flat walk all the way back to the car. It, this is actually called the rim trail. So it's connecting, uh, you know, above, going around the rim, go above the amphitheater. The whole thing is 11 miles. So this park from sunrise to sunset 
I believe it's only half a mile long. It's not that far. Yeah, and that this is another great option if you're not feeling like going up and down the hills. You know, you can pretty much just cut this into small sections and work your way along the rim and take in some really pretty views. Yeah, for beginners or like elderly, um, if you're not, you know, big for all the, the steep, like up and down, this is really pretty because you can see a lot of the, the hoodoos below. Yeah, you don't get the benefit of being down in them, but it's still, it's still really nice. So as you see, you can still get quite the view from up here. The one thing I would definitely say is be careful in the snow. I don't know where that edge is, so I'm not gonna try to get really close for that perfect shot. Maybe just uh, you know, get the camera up a little bit higher and take in that view, but still really nice view. Along the rim trail, you'll also find the occasional bench where you can stop and take in the scenery. And it's just a really nice little stroll. Unfortunately, in the winter, certain sections of it were closed down, so doing the whole thing was not even an option. Once you start seeing signs for the lodge and sunset point, you are almost back to the car. We were a little bit frozen at this point, so the last little bit seemed like it took forever. But soon the trailhead started to come into view and you could totally tell that that made V's day. All right, well that pretty much concludes the hike. Uh, there are several different little trails like this one here that take you to the parking lot, so it doesn't really matter. We're taking the same one back just because, uh, I don't know, OCD, make you feel like yeah did the entire loop. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you can pretty much take any other way um, to, to go back to the parking lot, but we're back at Sunset Point that way. Yeah. That was a, that was a good hike. It's freezing, but we're, we're having a good time. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely solid, and it's uh, more tiring when you do these in the snow, I think, because, uh, you know, we do a lot of like 10 mile hikes with 2,000 feet of elevation gain or more. And uh, this is nowhere near those stats. And it's like, whew, all right, I'm a little tired now. <laughs> Definitely harder with the really cold winds and... Yeah, the temperatures don't help either, that's for sure. But the one good thing I think about coming more in the winter months is that uh, I think there's less crowds. So, Way less crowd. So not only is it more beautiful, but there were like a couple of hours that seemed like we had the whole place to ourselves. I mean, we've like, seen a handful of people on the trail. That was it. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't say that it's always like that. You never know that you might just come on that one weekend where it's a little bit packed. But um, from previous experience, every time we've done it in the snow, we've had a pretty decent amount of time of solitude in nature. It's been pretty nice. We're at the parking lot. Woo, we survived. And see butternut right over there. Yeah, you can barely see her. Thank you for coming with us on our hike. Oh, and if you like this new video style, why don't you do us a favor and uh, judo kick that like button. Hi. Yeah, and we'll definitely keep this style going. So, yeah, thanks for coming along with us. Thank you. See you later. Bye.